and good day on this Sunday afternoon. I'm so pleased to be here with you to talk about lifestyle trends, issues, and concerns for the 40-plus generation and beyond. There are many issues that affect us all in one way or another, young or old, simply depends how you look at it all. Up in our first half hour today, the stress of moving when you're elderly and don't know where to begin, both for you and the family wishing to help, will look at decluttering 101 at its best. In the second half hour, warning signs of an aging parent with health problems and how to cope, how to recognize the red flags and what to do. So let's get started. No matter the age, 35, 55, 85, moving is one of life's most difficult experiences. It typically ranks along with a divorce, job change, and loss of a spouse as one of the most difficult things we face during our lives. Moving for seniors is particularly troublesome. It's quite common that seniors have been in their current home for over 50 years or more. Leaving a home after this length of time is more than a physical change of place. It's often an emotional experience. Joining me to talk about transitions and moving is Yannick Fautu of Entourage Relocation Services, the A to Z of making the move an easy transition for the elderly and anyone else for that matter. Welcome to our show, Yannick. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're very welcome on this Sunday afternoon. Now, let's talk about some of the challenges of moving someone from a home that they've been living in for forever. The various challenges for someone who's been living in uh, in a home for 40 years is definitely the accumulation of what they have in their home. So they've accumulated things from them, for themselves, their kids, and possibly even their grandchildren. And all of these things uh, have become emotional they mm-hmm. have emotional attachment to these belongings so it's that's definitely the first challenge going through all this and deciding what's going to come uh, into the new residence which is a hundred percent of the time smaller than where they currently live so that's that's the main challenge to look at okay when I was re- researching for the show I mean I went on to your website um, but I also noticed that there's something call, called called a relocation stress syndrome and whether it exists or not is you know one thing but it it is a very stressful and emotional experience for uh, for an elderly person correct absolutely um... Relocation stress syndrome, I mean, we're talking about people who've been living in their home from 25, 30, 40, 50 years and onwards. They've probably, they were probably born there, their kids were born there, and we're asking them in the blink of an eye to move to a new place without their complete consent, going into a place that they don't know, it's not, not, not even probably close to where they currently live. It's very stressful for them because we're getting out of their comfort zone. And we're also getting them out of their their, their their daily routine, their life, their love life, and also the, the attachment they have to all the various objects that are in the, that home. So that beca- that be- um, it causes a lot of stress and anxiety, which we see a lot uh, in various moves for seniors. Okay. We are talking about a relocation stress and helping in the transition to move the elderly. If you have a question, give us a call at 790 or 1-800-491-CJAD, star talk on your cell, or text us at 514-800-STANDARD, rate supply. So, you know, you're sort of disconnected from the family association. How do you help to offset this type of a, a, a stress syndrome, if you will? Well, we first start off by seeing down with, uh, well, the family at best, if possible, or the senior, to decide... Um, with them what is going to come in the new residence Mm -hmm. so to start with we have to figure out the size of the new place so the 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 senior has to have found their new place we sit down together figure out this the size and then we decide with the furniture that they have is it going to fit Uh, we take measurements we take of the new home and the furniture to see where it's going to fit that's first step second step we look at what kind of storage they have because then at that point, we can know how much material they can bring so that they're not going to be cluttered. It's going to be safe for them to walk around. If they have a walker, they can walk safely. There are certain measurements you need to keep in mind in order not to hurt yourself when you're um, in a home with too much furniture. You can hurt yourself if you haven't got the right measurement in between each furniture uh, pieces of furniture. Okay. Uh- 
If you involve the senior involved with family members, how important is that? And should you involve them? Uh, let's say somebody gets very stressed over a move. Is it better to sort of get them all set up at the new place of, of location and then do the move for them? Uh, it's extremely important to get uh, the senior and the family involved at all time. They need to be, they need to know the step by steps of what's going to happen to them in order to decrease the anxiety or the relocation stress syndrome, which we talked about earlier. Uh, they need to be involved. They need to know what's going to happen next in order to, to, to calm them down and make the process a little bit more comfortable for them. And uh, by doing so, they're going to, it's going to be easier for them to accommodate or, or, or be comfortable into the new residence that they're going to get into. And it, I guess it could also be fairly therapeutic to go through all the stuff. So let's talk about clutter. I know I get very anxious when there's clutter in, in my home. And rather than going through it, you kind of avoid it. So by going through the clutter, <laughs> you're, you're sort of helping them sort through the stuff and almost cleanse them to a degree, right? To a certain extent, yes. Some of them have a little restraint. They don't necessarily want to go through the stuff because all of it is very important mm -hmm. which we completely understand but going through it will also declutter and get rid of the things that you haven't used for many many years or maybe even donate it which will ease um, the fact that you're get, getting rid of it or giving it away the fact you're, that it's going to be reused possibly by various charities if you're giving it to charity it's going to be re reused by someone else who is in need if you're selling it you might get a little bit of money for it which will ease the process but it's it's very therapeutic at the very end when you have downsized and you have a little less things to worry about and you know that what is left is what is actually going to fit into your home and is what is important to you as well. Okay. So you're one of these professional organizers, right? That you have several boxes that yeah. that one is a keep box. One is uh, a giveaway box and one is another box. So describe the process that you take uh, the resident through. Well, we start first of all by the room that they use the least. Okay, because it, it just gets them started, right? So you have the room that you use the least and you have three piles. Mm -hmm. The first pile is going to be the things that you cannot get rid of. They are extremely important. You use them every day or they are very, very sentimental. They have a sentimental value, value to you. Second one are the things that you're unsure. You've used them recently or they have a sentimental value, but you don't know if it's going to fit into the home. The third one, which also has another little three section, is the, they're the things you haven't used for many, many years. You don't have a use for them. You've probably, you don't remember you have them either. And you, you sort of don't have that much of an attachment to it, which all these things you can probably, like I mentioned earlier, donate, sell or recycle. And hopefully throw away as little as possible. We try to reuse or give them a second life. Okay, and how long would a, a home take to do something like this? How long is the process? It depends on the size of the home, but ideally we'd like to think people need to get started at least a couple of months before, uh, six to eight weeks before the major move, because six. you don't want to rush into these things. Okay, now which room of the house do you find usually is the most challenging to work uh, with? Uh, the bedroom, often, or even the garage. Uh, because they've probably just mm. put the extra things in the garage for the things from the kids, the things from the grandkids, or even from their wedding, the pictures. The garage is usually one of the main, uh, the toughest room to, to attack. That and probably the basement where all the boxes are stored with older pictures and all that, correct? Exactly. All right, next, how do you get rid of your precious possessions? Living Better with Elizabeth Staffier on News Talk Radio CJAD 800. Leaving your old home and moving to a new one is stressful under the best conditions. But for seniors, moving can be especially difficult. Senior moves are often the result of a, a significant life change. It may be a, a health issue, financial circumstances, or even loss of a spouse that causes you to have to downsize. 
Actually, the term right-sizing has now replaced downsizing. That alone gives a new and more positive look at this next stage in life. So joining me is Yannick uh, Fautou. She's from uh, Entourage uh, Relocation Services. Fautou. I That's said right. Fautou. <laughs> That's not the right way. So, uh, Yannick, how does one get rid of possessions and the stra- stress of this uh, type of necessary change. I know I'm attached to, you know, pictures of my children and I will not get rid of anything, you know, clothing, shoes, uh, sentimental things. That must be huge for uh, for people who are uh, uh, moving locations. Absolutely. If if, uh, there isn't enough space in the new home for them to keep all of it, uh, often more than not, just the fact of giving it away, giving it a second life will often uh, heal the wound of having to give it uh, having to give it away. So there are various charities that do take uh, clothing that will give them a second life that will allow people in need to reuse them. So that often more than not uh, helps the healing process. Okay. So how do you determine uh, what to keep, what to sell, what to give away? Because, you know, I think I'd have everything in the keep file. <laughs> so your job would be very difficult yeah. with me. Uh, what What are the determining factors? Uh, number one is um, emotional attachment. That, that's the number one. Second of all, we look at space. So when we sit down with a person and we've done our various piles, this, the, the number two pile that we talked about earlier, which is the one that we we really love, but we're not sure if we want to give it away, whether we have enough space. We already have a lot in the in the pile one that are very emotional that we can't get rid of. That second pile already knowing that we have a lot that's very important to us already helps us release us from various other things that we can't bring because of space. And when we do, uh, when we come to our customers, we do floor plans, Mm -hmm. uh, which gives, gives them a visual tool for them to see exactly how much space they'll have and what kind of security they will have in their home. If they have a walker and they don't have 3.3 feet in between each pieces of furniture, it becomes very dangerous. Difficult to maneuver the walker around. Exactly. So Mm -hmm. we give them visual tools for them to understand why we can't bring certain things. But obviously we are not the deciding factor. They are, they make the final decision. Um, in the end, we sometimes bring a little bit more, but we end up they end up seeing that we were right in the end, that you can't bring too much because in the end, it, it can become uh, a hazard for okay. security. Okay, so now we're talking about the house, but Entourage does more than just that. And I think that's why I'm having you on the air here, because there's more than just, you know, decluttering the house. There's other things when somebody is moving and they're at an age where... Um, you know, you need to do change of address. There's there's quite a bit that you do from A to Z. And that's, if you can describe some of the other services that help alleviate the stress of a move. Mm-hmm. Everything that you can think about when you're moving, we can help you with. So we're, we're talking about downsizing to six to eight weeks prior. We're also talking about uh, the change of address. Uh, we'll help you with the various numbers. We can even sit down with you and do the address change for you, knowing that you need to be nearby, obviously, because a lot of the companies need to know that we're not talking to strangers. But we can help with the change of address, the downsizing, managing the move. When we're talking about managing the move, there are various steps for that. There are all the planning, the reservation of the elevators, the movers, the people that will be working with you, um, the reinstallation into your new home. Mm-hmm. Will you be putting your curtains up, your frames? Who's going to install your dishwasher? Um, who's going to do your bed? Because a move is very, very tedious and very demanding physically and emotionally. So when you've spent that moving day, which will have probably taken you 10 to 12 hours, possible it's a good average of 10 hours a move so when you've spent that whole day of 10 hours moving you will be tired you will want to sleep in the end and this is what we provide we provide peace of mind knowing that at the end of that day you'll have a comfortable made-up bed to go to bed in and sleep and 99% of the time the whole house is actually put up and your home is is your home 
basically. Well, you sound like a dream come true, <laughs> but let's go. I'm sure our listeners are kind of thinking, well, you know what? It's only for people who can really afford your type of service and they end up doing it themselves. How affordable is it? For our services, we can easily th say that uh, it's about a month's rent. So it's not that demanding, it's not that expensive, and it's going to take a huge weight off your shoulders. If you're finding it difficult, it's not expensive. And even if not finding it difficult, just having a few hours with us will take, will give you that extra strength to go forward with it and give you those extra tools to allow your family to help you as well, to take the lead and manage your move properly. So, um, All right, coming up, I'll ask Yannick more about the A to Z services that Relocation. Uh, Relocalisation Entourage has to offer. This is Living Better on News Talk Radio, CJD 800. Living Better with Elizabeth Staffier on News Talk Radio, CJAD 800. Health and access to quality care is the primary reason for moving for the elderly. I am talking with Yannick Fautu of Entourage Relocation. Um, during the break, we actually had a phone call, um, and the I, I think I'd like to address this uh, hoarding. Uh, do you deal with anybody that has an issue with hoarding, and how do you go about through the process? And take me to through some of the steps. Um, hoarding is uh, definitely something that needs to be addressed um, with a professional. We, we can help them to a certain level. Someone who is um, an extreme hoarder, there are some people out there and we can recommend definitely people around us. There are professionals that really, really specialize in hoarding that we can definitely uh, suggest to them. That you would work perhaps, I guess, in partnership Absolutely. with because it's more of a psychological issue Yeah, exactly. Uh, that you need a professional to help deal with that. So let's do a final wrap up um, uh, with your services. Uh, just final tips if somebody is looking to make the move and needs the help of uh, a company such as yours. Well, to start with, when you're, you're doing a move, you have to start thinking about it ahead of time. So first of all, start by looking for your, your residents. Okay, there are you can call us. We have plenty of people and professionals that work in that field. There are, it's, it's a field that is completely free. People that can help you find your residence. Um, when you found your residence, then you want to start straight away looking into your downsizing. And after you've done a little bit of downsizing, getting your help involved, getting people around you, family, friends, then you want to start getting all the necessary reservations, planning of your move. And this is all things we can help you with. It can be a certain, a little part of it or the complete, complete move. Complete move. Thanks so much, Yannick, for joining me. The number is 514-267-9681 uh, for Entourage Relocation. Uh